Welcome back guys. Thank you for tuning in to the next video in this AET tutorial series. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to complete your plan and your budget for your SAE. These are both really, really important components. Um, planning everything out, all the details, all the money issues um, of your project ahead of time before you get started is extremely important. That way you can make sure that this project is something you actually really want to work on and you can make sure that you're going to have enough money and that you're planning on making enough money to maybe cover any costs or make this worth your time. So to do our plan, we are here on our project experience manager. Remember that icon can be found on the main page so your main AET dashboard, the profile page, the journal page, and the finances, right? So we're going to Project Experience Manager. And to do your plan, we're going to click on this cute little pencil. Notice you have a red X next to it. Remember that. That's important. So we're going to click on the pencil. Now the different types of SAEs are going to have different tabs. Um, this example is in entrepreneurship or in ownership. SAE. Um, so I have four different tabs here. Uh, depending on the type of SAE that you have, you might have two tabs, you might have three tabs, right? So if you if what you have is different from what you're seeing on my screen right now, that's totally fine. So the main goal for completing your plan is to answer all of the questions and enter as many details as you can in all of the tabs that appear for you and for your SAE. So this first tab is gonna focus on describing your project. Um, if you are one of my students and you completed our last, our last Google Slides um, assignment where you wrote those four paragraphs, hint, hint, those four paragraphs were these four tabs, right? So that first tab or that first paragraph that was all about des uh, describing your SAE, you can copy and paste that in here. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, that is absolutely fine. So AET is very kind and provides kind of an outline. So here's some sentence frames that you can totally use to help write a description. So an outline of my project is, let's say, an outline of my project is, um, I will use my lawnmower and landscaping equipment. Oops. Those of you who know me know I cannot spell to save my life. Um, so I will use my lawnmower and landscaping equipment to provide landscaping services for my neighborhood or something along those lines. Um, check out my other YouTube video um, on creating plans and this will help you. But um, you can go through these sentence frames and you wanna describe in as many details as possible an overview of what you are actually planning on doing for your SAE in here. Uh, thank you AET for having this spell check also. Students, please make sure that you check your spelling Oh, awesome. I did a good job this time. So please make sure you check your spelling. Uh, when you are done with this tab, we're going to go to the next one. So time investment. Um, how many hours are you going to spend um, doing what kinds of things in your project is what this is all about. So some key dates or events. Um, key dates might include weigh-ins for your animal. It might include fair. It might include the auction. Um, key dates could be when you uh, transplant, when you transplant seedlings that you started, um, when you have your plant sale, um, days, of, days of the week of the farmer's market, when you harvest your crops, any of those kinds of things. Um, and how does this relate to your career plan? That's really important. Remember, that's the point of an SAE is to give you skills that you can use outside of school and in your adult life in the future, whether or not your, your career interests are ag related. So talk about how this, this project that you're writing about is related to what you wanna do in the future, whatever that may be. Financial investment, um, again, this may, not, this may not pop up 
for everyone and it may look a little bit different depending on what kind of SAE you're working on, but use these sentence frames, answer as many questions as you can um, that apply to your SAE, and you're gonna write the information down in here. Again, please check your spelling. When you go on to apply for proficiencies, degrees, things of that nature, um, other advisors can see all of this. We can see everything that you type. Um, so please represent your chapter proudly and make sure you have proper spelling. All right, this last tab is a little bit different. So for the learning objectives and the skills, we want to know what things you are planning on learning through doing this SAE. So to do that, we're gonna click on add or explore skill areas. I love that SAE or the AET, sorry, the AET has done this. Um, whatever category or whatever primary category you've chosen for your SAE, it's automatically going to take you to that page. So remember, in this example, um, I am running a landscaping business and I selected plant systems. So this automatically takes me to the plant systems standards and kind of learning objectives. Read through these and you're going to click the little plus plus add button for any of these skills that you are actually planning on doing. So for example, um, if part of my landscaping business was to classify the plants um, according to their tax taxonomic systems, um, educate my customers about that, pick out plants based on these kinds of things, I could click plus add. And then this is gonna turn pink just to show me that I've already added that. I don't have to keep clicking the same button a bazillion times. Um, so scroll through. If I am going to maybe create some different designs, do some cool landscaping stuff, I can click on that as well. Um, you can also scroll through or browse through these other things or these other um, pathways as well. So remember, I'm running my own landscaping business. So I selected some plant system stuff because that's most of what my job is, but I also might be doing some agribusiness. I also might be doing some agribusiness skills as well. Um, so if I am doing fundamental accounting principles, right? Keeping track of my tools, all that stuff, keeping track of the different customers I service, how much they owe me, my different assets and liabilities, I could click on that as well. So your learning objectives for your plan don't have to all be only in the category, the original category that you chose. Um, browse through these other ones also and see if anything else fits. When you've clicked all the ones that you're satisfied with, um, I personally recommend at least three. We're gonna click save and back to SAE plan. Now the skills that we selected are in our list down here. Uh, the next step of this is to type in what activities we actually plan on doing to learn these skills that we selected. So if you're just saying um, you plan on learning how to create designs using plants, that's awesome. Now you're going to tell us how. So maybe you are going to um, provide different landscape design services. Or maybe you're going to learn how to make a cool dinosaur out of someone's hedge and you're going to trim that, right? Um, so you're gonna type that in here. So for each of the skills that you selected, tell us what you are planning on doing to learn that specific skill. So when you are done, we're gonna click save all and return. Please do not use your back button in your browser or on your phone um, at any point during, your, during the creation of your plan. This does not automatically save and you'll lose everything if you click the back button. So click save all and return. So remember this little pencil with the, with the red X? If my plan was complete, this should be green. So because this X is red still, um, that's telling me that I'm missing something from my plan. So I'm going to pause this video, I'm going to complete my plan, and I will be back in a second.
All right, so I've gone gone back through my plan. I went through each tab um, and I completed the planned activities for each learning objective. Um, and I know my plan is now totally complete because it's got this nice, pretty green check mark next to it. So make sure it's got that green check mark. If that green check mark is still a red X, that means we're missing something. We need to go back through. Um, again, always remember to click save when you are working on your plan. Otherwise, you might lose it all. Uh, next part of this video, we're going to focus on the budget. So not everyone is going to have this little budget icon, the red and green dollar sign, pop up for them, depending on your SAE type. Um, if your SAE has absolutely nothing to do with money, you can skip this, which is great. Or if this doesn't show up at all, that means that your SAE type is not supposed to have anything to do with money. So make sure... Um, that your SAE is set up correctly for this to appear or not appear. So to get to your budget, we're going to click on that budget icon. Our first option up here is our income. So we're just going to estimate how much money we are hoping on making through this SAE. Um, we're also going to categorize it. You don't have to fill in every single one of these boxes, only fill in the ones that apply to you. So for example, if you were selling something, if you were selling a product um, like fruits or vegetables, we're gonna type in how much money you hope to make through the sale, right, of that SAE. And then over here in the notes and memo option, um, it could be helpful, this is optional, but it could be helpful to just kind of do a brief little blurb on what you are doing. So let's say we want to earn a total of $500 through this SAE by selling fruit at the farmer's market. Or you could just type fruit sales or farmer's market income, something along those lines. Right now, if that's the only type of income that you are planning on receiving, that's great. That's all you have to do. Um, if you're not planning on on winning any awards or scholarships, receiving any premiums, just leave that blank. No big deal. So next part is expenses. There's lots of options for expenses. You can see how many how many cool options they give us. So same thing we did for income. Um, you're going to estimate how much money you're planning on spending in each of these categories. And again, not all of these are going to apply to everybody. Um, so if you have a market, a market animal project, you're going to spend some money on feed, maybe some vet meds, um, inventory for resale, is the animal itself. But you're probably not going to have to buy seeds or fertilizers or chemicals, right? Um, same thing with fuel. So if you have a landscaping business, um, like my example, I might have some fuel expenses in here, but I'm probably not going to have to buy any kind of medicine for my lawnmower, right? I'm going to do all the repairs myself. So only fill in the things that apply to you. So these non-cash down here, um, if you're not sure what these are, Basically, it means you're still going to have to pay for feed, for other expenses, uh, for veterinary medicine in some way, shape, or form, but you're not going to pay for those with actual cash. And we'll talk about more, we'll talk about those more um, in another video, but this is still an expense. You're still going to have to get that medicine, those supplies, that's those seeds and fertilizers, um, but maybe you're not going to actually spend money on them. Maybe you're going to trade for them. Maybe you're going to work for them, something along those lines. So again, we're going to put in um, our estimated expense, some kind of notes or memo. So let's say I'm going to spend, uh, let's say $300 on things like weed killer, uh, miracle grow. I don't know how to spell miracle. Yeah. Miracle grow, um, things, things like that. So when you're done going through both income and expense, we're going to click save. 
and then your budget is complete.